So I've been sitting down and writing my vision for the next five years. Well, to be more honest, I was standing because I recently read a book called, I'm pretty sure it's called Get Up, How Your Chair is Killing You. And uh, quite a profound book about why we're supposed to stand and not sit. So I spent most of my day standing. That's the, the new habit I'm incor incorporating. Anyway, I, I was writing my five-year vision and my two biggest values came up and I thought it would be a good chance to discuss them and kind of share with you what they are. So the first main value that I run my life around <laughs> is ethics. This is actually... Uh, relatively new value it was always there but i never really um put the quite the right emphasis on it until i got a lot of power through the second value which i'll explain shortly and when you have too much power and influence and not enough ethics uh similar to what happened to Harvey Weinstein lately, you're going to crash. It's going to end really, really badly. So ethics is the first value. And what I mean by ethics is trying to constantly move towards the ideal of truth and right action, meaning saying the right thing, acting in the proper way, and being in aligned with life in the proper way. That means moving forward with grace like a sword and not creating tensions by making lies or micro lies and always having precise vision. So ethics is, is like a sword. A person with really, really high ethics. He's like a person with a sword. That sort can cut through anything because you try to bullshit someone with very high ethics, he's going to see right through it. You know, ethics is when the the news reporter I was talking to a few days ago for uh, an interview that's going to be up on Israeli TV this weekend, when he was trying to change my my statement so i said one thing and then he tried to manipulate my statement to try to appease the audience and completely attack me instead of my point it was very easy for me to call him up on it and to say you just broke ethics basically you just did something not ethical you just took uh, somebody's argument completely changed it to uh, achieve your goal you know when people uh, lie or change small things reminds me of a friend of mine who works in a guard position and I came over to visit him and he got off the shift so he was supposed to basically stop getting paid but because he stayed in his desk he didn't stop the clock quote unquote and basically the it, it the payment will keep coming because it's as if he's still working I had to tell him that this is unethical because you wouldn't want that to be done to you I mean you've signed up for what like 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. that's the time you're supposed to be there if you stay more than that that's not what you agreed on so by getting more money by staying you're basically going against what you said you're going to do and another thing that's really cool about ethics is that ethics also allows you to create commitments. So somebody who's not ethical, you know, there's a reason why in Hollywood, for example, the average divorce rate is like 90%. When you act unethically, meaning you put on a charade, you don't, you're not truly yourself, you don't really value your word, you cannot create commitments, you're very shifty. And first of all, people would not like to, don't want to create commitments with you. But even those who do, it, the commitment is going to end up backfiring on 
at least one of you. So the, the ability to commit to things is also a part of ethics, which, uh, for example, relates to my relationship, where, as I've said in previous videos, it's the first time I decided to commit and basically stay no matter what. And the growth I've experienced from that is profound, because when you decide to stick in a situation no matter what, that means that you took the consideration of should I stay or should I go out of the picture and you gain new resources that were not previously there because now you face things that you would never face in the past. So in situations where you'd say, you know, fuck this, I'm going, I'm leaving. And again, it doesn't have to be a relationship. It could be a business goal. You choose to stay. <laughs> and by choosing to stay and commit to staying no matter what, you build character in the most profound and deep ways by facing things you would never experience without that commitment. Again, you're shifty. If you don't have that commitment, you just leave when it's gone. It's got to a certain point, unless, again, you decide you stay no matter what. So the second value, main value that I have, and these are really my two, pretty much my, you know, I have more values, obviously. I care about things like health, I care about things like, um, I don't know, <laughs> I didn't even have an example, but I care about other stuff too. But everything I can take is always a, kind of derived from those two values. And they both create, for example. So, so the second value is growth and progress. And that's why, for example, health, again, uh, you cannot do growth and progress without having good health. A person without good health can't develop because he can't, he doesn't have the proper um, the discipline, you know, willpower in the head, uh, the proper energy to make things happen. Um, you know, you could spiritually develop, but you can't, like, super expand. So the, the second value, the growth value, um, it was also very strong in me from a very young age. I had a huge passion for growth, for things that improve quickly, for exponential um, growth and that's why for example I could not work in jobs that you know regular jobs because I would always want more money and sometimes there just wasn't more money to give it's not like you know I could do something more so I would start abusing the hours and start to see how much I can stretch the limit and always trying to kind of entrepreneurialize my way in the job which actually gave me a pretty hefty amount of promotions uh, because I always try to do crazy things to grow my income and uh, the, the right employee employer would notice that uh, so that's how I got into really good positions like like manager level positions in uh, high-tech companies at age like uh, <laughs> 1920 and the problem was that the growth thing I had a so much of it but it was not balanced with ethics. So during, you know, when I was 21, 22 early, I think, I would make seriously dangerous commitments to people, you know, usually regarding finances. Like, yeah, I'll be able to make that payment. Now you help me. Or, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to help you get that result. And I, I abused it, not because I was hungry for money or anything, it was just growth at all costs. It was just progress no matter what. It's like a guy that, you know, got really, really good growth through working out, you know, building his body, and then you kind of start to plateau, and you know you, can, you, you want the growth. You can't take the plateau, so he just starts injecting steroids, you know, all in the, in the name of keeping things going. Basically, you know, the ends justify the means, which is in direct conflict with the most basic of ethics because ethics, you know, you can sum it up in uh, treat others the way you want to be treated, demand others to treat you the way uh, you want them to treat you, and also don't treat others the way you don't want to be treated and vice versa because the, it's not just how you act towards people, it's also how you don't act towards other people. So, you know, those people that are like the most amazing, kind nice people and then something goes wrong and they turn into these crazy angry apes that nobody wants to be around and you're like 
what happened? You know, you're, you're such an awesome person. Like you've got half of it down. Like you do all the right things. Just, just, you know, inhibit your emotions, dude. <laughs> usually, usually it's with women, uh, in my experience, but you know, uh, guys also tend to go crazy in, uh, guys are more of a jerk. So, so, you know, with guys, uh, it's mostly the things that they do when, you know, what they, they do that are fucked up and then they usually are more reserved. They don't just, you know, go crazy when things go bad. But with women, it's the opposite. It's like when things are okay, women are like the sweetest ever. But then when things start to go wrong, you know, so some women go crazy. Um, again, just a generalization though. Uh, there are exceptions to each. So yeah, these are the two um, main values. And I discovered them by simply looking back at my life and seeing what was the most common um, kind of narrative, what was the most common motivation to everything. And, you know, you can think of motivation in various levels. You can think uh, very, very high level motivation which could be, I have to get this project down on time, for example. You have a deadline, I have to reach that deadline. But then you say, okay, why is that motivation there? And then you say, now, if you just look at that, you say, okay, this person really cares about reaching deadlines. But then let's say you go one level below to more uh, root, deep level motivation, uh, which is actually simpler and more complicated at the same time, paradoxically. And what you would find is that person that's like, hey, I have to reach this deadline. Maybe what's really going on is because I don't want to disappoint people. And if I disappoint people, like, that's the worst thing ever. So all, you find out that they're not actually conscientious. They're not actually uh, ethical. And what's motivating them is not ethics or commitment. It's actually just fear of uh, disapproval and rejection. So you need to really, really look deep into those motivations, your strongest motivations, the one that sort of override everything. So when I say override, I mean, like you said you're going to do one thing, but then the desire was so strong that you did the other thing anyway. Like I would say, okay, I'm really going to just be okay at this job. I'm really just going to, you know, try my best to just, you know, settle for less. And then like, like a week or two later, I'm like, shit, I want more. This is not enough. And, and nothing nothing helps. Or uh, like I'm like, okay, I'll just do what they tell me to do. And then suddenly I'm going ahead and entrepreneurializing everything. Or if we're talking about ethics, um, it's like I would say something that's like a lie or I would uh, do something wrong and I would feel the, the, the deep need that cannot be resolved to basically acknowledge that I did that to basically tell the other person or at least acknowledge myself that I actually did something wrong and I'll tell I'll, I do that and I actually provide a solution not to do it again I will not feel good about myself and the same with other people like if somebody did something wrong to me like acted in an unethical way even without noticing like like late like if someone was like three minutes late or five minutes late and they didn't let me know that they're going to be five minutes late it's like I'm gonna have to tell them. Like I'm not gonna be able to just sit down and like, you know, just be. I, I'm gonna have to be like, look, you, when you are late, and you know you're gonna be late, you have to tell people that you're gonna be late. Like I would, I would not let that go. Like I would not force it on them, but I would have to say it. So, yeah, that's called being highly conscientious, basically. Uh, if you study the the big five uh, personality traits, uh, which are. Uh, conscientiousness, agreeableness, openness, neuroticism, and extroversion. So if you study these big five traits, you'll see that ethics are very much correlated with conscientiousness. And it's actually conscientiousness and IQ are the two biggest correlations to income. So if you um, if you Google uh, IQ income, you actually see that I, uh, income grows by about 10 times for every 10 points of IQ, which is uh, very interesting, but unfortunately not part of this uh, uh, episode. 
So yeah, those are the two big values. And this is why coaching is my biggest passion because coaching is me instilling basically through ethics, through thinking, you know, the right thinking and actually looking at things properly, allowing people to experience massive growth while also clarifying the map for me because coaching is is a two-way street when you coach someone you super enhance the information that you have you basically clarify it and make sense of it if you have a that kind of personality so for me coaching is like breathing it's like the most important thing and when i coach i come alive because again i get the chance to instill my two biggest benefits on other people while also reinforcing them in me. I've noticed that with people who love my stuff, you know, my videos, usually these two, at least one of these two is present. Uh, Like almost everybody who likes my stuff are at least either super big proponents of growth or uh, either that or of... um, just ethics and what I would urge you to do if you still don't know your values is to actually sit down or stand (laughs) as we talked earlier and try to map out which values in your life have starred and you'll find them consistently so it's not like you something you develop you know of course, you develop them, but they're, they're always there. So you develop in relation to them already being there. You know, you acknowledge them, you <laughs> embrace them, or they kill you. <laughs> so, so try to look in the past and look, see, what was your biggest motivation? Like, where, what's the things that are always good? Like, I'm always about growth. Like, anything that is related to growth, like me becoming smarter, more fit, uh, healthier, earn more, anything that relates to growing is immensely satisfying to me. Like I always want growth. And anything related to ethics, to acting more properly, to being more in line with truth and reality, to being more conscientiousness, to being more uh, a master of uh, my soul, and, uh, and, and, and move through life uh, both gently and sharply at the same time. Anything that relates to that also starred throughout my entire life. Like every decision I made, it was like, is this ethical or is this not ethical? And whenever it was towards ethics, I felt amazing. Whenever I, towards, I got towards a lack of ethics, I would, I would just suffer uh, increasingly so, by the way, the more I went straight from it. Um, again, same with growth. Like the more I stra- went towards growth, the quicker I grew, uh, the more incredible I felt. Even though I f- like w- did super risky shit and put myself in extremely scary situations, just seeing myself grow, like grow my income like five times in in a few months, shit, I was so exhilarated. Like like nothing was better, nothing. Like there was no better feeling. And um, and also in periods where growth is stagnating and I'm kind of just getting in the rut, you know, just feeling comfortable, I immediately start feeling like something's wrong. So that value was always, always, always there. Hope this video, help, video helps. Uh, share it if you could. Subscribe if you haven't. And check out my description for uh, my free ebook on business. Um, also a chance to buy my autobiography. Uh, really interesting book like I got a lot of good reviews on it you can check it out and also a chance for a limited time to go on a free coaching call with Robbie thank you and talk soon